of settling down and being grounded in life is eventually buying a house. Traditionally, that house has a foundation on solid ground because if anything is off kilter, the whole house may come down. But the houses you're about to see defy the laws of physics. Here are some jaw-dropping houses that defy gravity. We have a habit of making jaws drop from time to time with our videos. Be the first to know when we upload a new video by subscribing to our channel and turning on the notifications. Cliff House After getting an influx of clients who wish to live on the edge of the coastline, an Australian housing firm called Modscape came up with the Cliff House. While it hasn't been built yet, it is a very plausible dream for those who wish to live off the ground. The Cliff House is a five-story home that clings to the side of a cliff. The company took inspiration from barnacles, which attach themselves to anything they can find. Instead of sitting on top of land, Modscape created a design where the house hangs off the side of it. The top floor would be a carport for the resident and their vehicle. Then the resident would go through the different stories of the house with a set of stairs in the middle. The stairs create a natural divide between the two sections. Furnishings would be minimal, and the windows would be so huge so that the resident could enjoy the views of the ocean all around them. It all sounds very Batman-like, or even something that Tony Stark might enjoy. The house would be anchored to the side using steel pins, and Modscape has said that the house can't be built with conventional construction. The Log House Nikolai Petrovich Sutyagin was a Russian businessman who made a fortune from the lumber business. After having a lonely upbringing, he decided to build a house and just kept building. It was 144 feet tall and it was all made from wood, hence the name The Log House. After he started building the house in 1992, he kept going for 15 years. The house was located in the outskirts of the city of Archangel, and it became an iconic landmark for the town. Sutjegen was originally going to just build two floors, but then got inspired after seeing houses in Japan and Norway and decided to keep building. In 1998, he was convicted of racketeering and was sent to prison for four years. While he was incarcerated, robbers and business rivals robbed him, destroyed his equipment, and even tossed his five cars into the river. After he was released, he continued to work on the house until 2008. Sutyagin's neighbors said the house was an eyesore and a monstrosity. The city said that the local houses couldn't be taller than two stories and that the massive wooden structure could cause the whole neighborhood to go down in flames. The courts declared that the house had to be demolished. Cube Houses Living in a cube seems like it would not only be cramped, but if you walk to one side, the cube could topple. Located in the Netherlands in the city of Rotterdam, these cube houses were designed by architect Piet Blom in 1974 and then built in 1977. The trial run of the cube houses were built in Helmond in the 70s before settling down in Rotterdam. Blom modeled the designs after trees, and together, the houses create something similar to the woods. Each house is tilted 45 degrees and sits upon a hexagon-shaped pole. There are three sides facing down towards the ground and three sides facing up towards the sky. The houses have three floors. The bottom is a living space with a kitchen, bathroom, and study. The middle floor has the bedrooms, while the top floor is a viewing deck as well as a functional attic. The cube houses have become an icon of Rotterdam and are very expensive to live in. But if you can't afford a cube house, you can still check out the museum and show cube called the Kijk Cubus. Below the houses are a traffic-free area where there are shops and even a playground for the kids. Free Spirit Spheres It seems that there's no better way to connect with nature, relieve some stress, and connect with your inner free spirit than being suspended 10 to 15 feet from the ground. If you're afraid of heights, then maybe these gravity-defying homes aren't your cup of tea. Located in British Columbia, Canada, the Free Spirit Spheres don't have a traditional foundation. Instead, they are hung from the tops of trees. You can also anchor the sphere from the top and bottom. There are three spheres total, and they all have names. Eve is suspended 10 feet in the air. Melody can be found at 14 feet, and Aaron at 15 feet. While the Free Spirit Spheres are part of a hotel business, people still reside in these spheres throughout the year. You can only access the spheres by climbing stairs or walking on a suspension bridge. And they have also been known to swing and sway in the wind. They are made out of wood and held together by glue. Don't worry, it's sturdier than you think. 
You might also notice that the spheres don't have plumbing. There's an outhouse at the base of each sphere as well as a three-room bathhouse about 164 feet away. Upside Down House This house both serves as a political statement as well as a tourist trap. The Upside Down House was designed by Daniel Kapiuski, built in 2007 and located in Szymbark, Poland. Not only is the house built upside down, but it's tilted as well, meaning that you won't find the comfort of a level home here. The house was built as a political statement on the backwards politics of when Poland was under communist rule. The house would have been done sooner, but workers kept getting disoriented from the uneven surface and the topsy-turvy look. Inside, though, the house is right side up and fully furnished with decorations and furniture from the 70s. There's a vintage TV playing old communist propaganda as well. In case you haven't caught on to the theme yet, Kapiowski was trying to show how Poland's world was literally turned upside down due to communism. Visitors have to climb into the home, and even once inside, despite the right side up furnishings, people have gotten nauseous and disoriented. Woohoo! It's time for our quiz! Who designed over 1,000 structures and completed 532 of those designs with a philosophy called organic architecture? Stay tuned for the answer at the end of this video. Coral Wai Tree Houses Located in Indonesia, the Coral Wai of Papua is the last known active tribe of cannibals. The tribe has about 3,000 to 4,000 people left, and they lived in total isolation until they were discovered by missionaries in the 1970s. Members of the Korowai have also been slowly leaving the village and moving to larger nearby towns. One of the most remarkable things about this tribe is that they are incredible architects and have managed to build tree houses that are as high as 114 feet in the air. When you look at these tree houses, they look like they shouldn't be able to sit so quietly and sturdy. Banyan or wanbom trees serve as the pole, and the villagers live that high off the ground to not only avoid the swarms of mosquitoes, but also avoid their neighbors and evil spirits. There can be as many as over a dozen people in one treehouse along with animals. The single pole serves as the treehouse's ladder as well. The floor is built first, and then the walls and roof are held together with raffia. The houses also have a fire pit that can be cut away in case of flames get too crazy. The tree houses only last about five years. Floating Castle Engineering and architecture have come a long way. While contemporary designs are amazing, looking at the architecture of times past proves that there were some pretty creative designers back in the day. Take for example this house. How is it standing and not toppling over to one side? You could say that the floating castle is a myth and a mystery. Supposedly located in Odessa, Ukraine, this floating house is only supported by a single leg. However, there has been some speculation as to whether or not the house is real because there isn't any information on the architect. Some people have said that it's an old bunker, while others have said it's an abandoned farmhouse. One thing is for certain is that this house looks like it should be in a sci-fi movie due to its intriguing architecture, ability to stay up despite not having additional legs for support, and, well, looking like it was built by aliens. Those who have reportedly found the house have said that it is abandoned, but it attracts guests on a regular basis. Theories as to how the house is still standing remains a mystery, but many people tend to blame aliens or ghosts. Shadow Cliff Located in the small town of Ellison Bay, Wisconsin, with a population of less than 200 people, Shadow Cliff definitely stands out as one of the most gravity-defying houses in the area. Shadow Cliff was designed in 1968 by Harry Weiss and built in 1969. If you're in the architect and designer world, Weiss's name might sound familiar. He designed the 30-story Time Life Building in Chicago, and also led the restoration project of Union Station in Washington, D.C. When you think of Wisconsin, you probably don't think of it as an amazing real estate for a designer home, especially in a small town. But once you see the view, oh, it all makes sense. As you can see, the glass box is suspending over Ellison Bay, which is part of Lake Michigan. If you have ever had reservations over standing on the diving board at a pool, you might feel a bit antsy about this house. All that is keeping you from plummeting down into the bay are two steel beams that are anchored into the cliffside. If you can manage to get over any fear of heights and not think about how high you might be, you'll be treated to some spectacular views of Lake Michigan. Habitat 67 
It looks like the middle of a game of Jenga, where you don't know whether or not the blocks will fall. Designed by Moshe Safdie, Habitat 67 is considered to be one of the most important and iconic structures from the 1967 World's Fair. Located in Montreal, Canada, Habitat 67 was government-sponsored and built with the purpose of reimagining apartment living. Given the weight and massive size of the apartments, you would think that this would be unstable, but they're pretty sturdy. The design was inspired by a post-war Japanese architect movement called metabolism, which believes that buildings should be organic, living, interconnected cells. Each cube in Habitat 67 has access to a rooftop garden, which is a part of the complex's mission to have contact with nature. Safdie had a vision that apartments like Habitat 67 would take over the world, but it didn't work out that way. The homes were very expensive to build and set up, and because it was government funded, rents were set high in order to recoup losses. Unfortunately, rent was so high that people lost interest, and the movement dwindled down. Today, you can live in Habitat 67 as it is still an active apartment complex. Balancing Barn Ideally, when you build a house in the English countryside, you want that home to have a sturdy foundation on solid ground. However, a team of designers went in the opposite direction of that concept. The Balancing Barn was designed by the Dutch company MVRDV and is part of a non-profit movement known as Living Architecture which has a mission to bring designer homes to the general masses. The movement was started by Elaine de Botton, and the non-profit was commissioned several other houses in the countryside as well. Located in Suffolk, England, the balancing barn looks at gravity in the face and laughs as half of the building is without a foundation and in the air. How is that possible? What is keeping the barn from falling to one side is the counterbalance that uses a concrete slab and footing. There is also a glass floor so you can see just how far above the ground you're hanging. The interior of the house was designed by Studio Mackink and Bay BV. The house is set up for two people, but it can accommodate as many as eight. If you want to rent the balancing barn for five days during the Christmas holiday, it will cost you about $4,000. Who designed over 1,000 structures and completed 532 of those designs with a philosophy called organic architecture? That would be Frank Lloyd Wright. Thanks for watching. If you feel inspired to defy gravity with your next home, tell us in the comments. Plus, if you enjoyed this video, take a peek at some of our other stuff like these videos right here. Finally, before you go soaring up into the clouds, take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Up, up, and away. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.